Hey guys, it's Maika again and in the last video I was telling you why you should study in Australia and if it's worth it. And if you've seen that video to the end, you probably um, know that I promise you that in the next video I will tell you why you shouldn't study in Australia. And this video is about exactly that topic, so I'm gonna give you five reasons why you shouldn't study in Australia. But don't worry, uh, if you really want to study, um, you know, you can still do it. First reason why you shouldn't study in Australia is quality. It's a low quality of education, low quality um, of knowledge that you can get. And why is that? I'm gonna give you um, some examples. So first of all, uh, staff uh, very often is not uh, well trained to, or, you know, to teach really. And what I experienced on RMIT, because I have certificate from RMIT somewhere here. Uh, so I study a project management in construction. And my teachers, they were, you know, like business owners. Um, there was some president of some kind of organization for project management and um, all kind of people from, from the field. And it's really great because, you know, they have a work experience. They really work in the field. But uh, what they are lacking is basically experience and knowledge how to teach, especially on RMIT because, um, you know, uh, some of the teachers, they, they were struggling explaining things. They, uh, they often were really confused as well. Like my teachers, I have two teachers that were like completely new to studying. So like they never really um, teach anyone before. So we were the first class and well, and you can s clearly see that they don't really know what they're doing. As well, Edgar was studying on Melbourne Polytechnic and he was studying about AutoCAD. So if you know about drawing a little bit, you probably know AutoCAD is it's, it's very popular everywhere in the world. Um, and it happened that Edgar already had a bachelor degree in design. So he, he knew AutoCAD when he was studying. And the teacher, he didn't know AutoCAD that well. And he even told him like, you know, in front of the class and said, oh my God, you know, uh, you know much more about AutoCAD, you should be teaching here. So, you know, it's uh, <laughs> when you're spending all that money, uh, because it's very expensive, um, you don't want to hear something like this, you know. I mean, it, it's nice, it's, it's a kind of like a compliment, but you don't want to hear that, oh, you know, you could be teaching here. Uh, you just pay 5,000 for that course. A another example is like my um, teacher, like I'm studying her now on Southern Cross University, and um, one of the subjects is as well project management. And the guy who is teaching that subject, apparently he has no clue about um, studying, I mean, about really project management. So what he does, he um, takes definitions, uh, like let's say scope, and he would be like, oh, um, uh, give me give me a minute, um, I'm just gonna find that um, in a book, you know, the definition. Mm -hmm. He finds a book and he read it to us. And then if you like, you know, like what the hell, you know, you are paying almost 4,000 for that just one subject for guy to be reading, you know, a definition from the book, the same book that you have in front of you. And I, I'm assuming that you know how to read, so um, I know how to read, so I can read it myself. I don't need to pay 4,000, you know, for the guy to read definitions for me. <laughs> so uh, it's a little bit, you know, disappointing. But yeah, that's the low quality. Another aspect of low quality um, education is uh, the fact that um, lots of students, they don't speak English. Uh, I mean, um, maybe the day before yesterday, yeah. And what are you studying here? Uh, the interaction design. Interaction design, yeah. And this might be really, really difficult uh, because, you know, you can't communicate with them. And like when I was studying on RMIT, my group was um, over 200 students and uh, from this 200 students there was only four Australians. So far, are there many Australian students? Um, um, no. no. <laughs> um, one European, uh, me, and then um, the rest was Indians and um, Chinese. No one is the domestic, uh, domestic student in our classes. So they're all international? No, they're all there. I think lots of them are from India, lots of students. And a second reason why you shouldn't study is a group assessment. So you're gonna have assignments that you need to do with people. Uh, and if you hear properly uh, what I said in the first reason, uh, lots of people, they don't speak English. And we get put into groups and we're told, you know, this is your group for the semester. You're gonna be working with these people for the entire semester. And it was me and eight internationals 
students, all from uh, the same place, and they're all speaking their native language to each other. So imagine you need to um, do the group assessment with, uh, with a group that they don't really speak the language. So imagine, how are you going to do it? You're going to be the one who's going to be doing everything. So, uh, good for you. Everyone is going to get the same mark for what you have done. So, yeah. That may be quite annoying. It's maybe not the main reason to, oh, no, I'm not going to come to Australia. Because if you are really smart and if you like uh, doing stuff for uh, some other people, you know, do the job for, for everyone else around, uh, that's going to be perfect for you. I don't like it because I feel like it's not fair. So yeah, for me, it's like a, like a big no. No, no, thank you. The third reason why you shouldn't study, it's, uh, I call it ATM. Uh, but basically what I mean is that Australian education system, it's a money-making system. Um, you know, basically um, taking from us international students. Education industry is booming. It's now our third largest export behind iron ore and coal. What I mean, we are paying more than Australians, which is, you know, fair enough. It's not our country, we can pay more, but we need to pay in advance for the first semester in, at least. And uh, we are getting that really low shitty quality of education. And as you know, it's fair enough because Australians are getting the same which I feel really sorry for them, but you are just gonna, you know, pay a lot of money and get uh, quite low quality education. So if you uh, are coming to Australia for education, I basically don't come. It's not the country to really teach you stuff, unfortunately. And I'm not saying because I have like bad experience because you, you may think, oh my God, probably she didn't pass something and now she's gonna be whinging about um, studying in this country. No, uh, I pass all my subjects. I'm uh, doing my second master degree. Um, I pay um, all my life savings <laughs> for that education. Uh, so that's why I'm a little bit disappointed. Uh, but I as well, uh, you know, took part in the project when we were interviewing uh, students from um, other countries that study here in Australia and we were asking them for, you know, their experience, experience quality and what they think, uh, if they would recommend uh, what is wrong, what is good and stuff. Um, so from this um, project, I know that unfortunately uh, we are basically like an ATM for the Australian education system. And if you uh, see the numbers, you will see that, uh, you know, there's so many, like basically I don't know, I think 80% are international students. So they need us, they need our money. Around the country, universities make more than $7 billion a year from international student fees. So yeah, I feel like a little bit, it's more like we are a cash cow um, for Australia, unfortunately. You can have that feeling. How do you think universities view international students? Look, um, of course, they are the cash cows. For a reason, it's confusing teaching methods. Um, so I think it's, it's confusing for us Europeans. Uh, it, it might be confusing, and especially if you are studying a language here, if you're gonna come and study English, for example, it might be quite confusing. Example, uh, you're gonna come to the class, and for example, you're gonna be learning present perfect. But the teacher is not gonna tell you that you are learning present perfect today, they will tell you a story around using that sentences in present perfect and you're gonna be like, mm, something about the past, oh my god, what can be, oh, 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 yo, yo. but it's like they're never gonna tell you really um, what's the topic about. Uh, it's quite confusing and why is that? Because some researchers, probably from US, uh, they find out that it's really stressful for students to know what they are studying. Really? Really? <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, I prefer to know what I'm studying you now rather than be like just um, wondering, oh my god, what I'm studying today? Oh, no, come on, people, you know, it's like maybe because I'm Polish, for me, it's like, you know, from A to Z, from A to B, it has to be, you know, everything organized. Uh, but I remember it was really annoying when I was here on the English course and they were like, like that, just just telling you shit around and you don't really know what's what's going on and very confusing um, on the other side uh, it's a little bit different when you are studying master degree or something like that um, you know what you study but if you're gonna go for English course it might be quite confusing um, 
as well if you um, what is confusing in the master and higher education is the assessment system sometimes you know they're gonna give you 10 pages of explanation of what you need to write about but you still need to write only like 1000 words so approximately two three pages so you're gonna get 10 pages of explanation what to write about but you only need to write like about two three pages and it's sometimes how are you gonna feed all what they want in the 10 pages in these two pages you know it's uh, something that i find really confusing but uh well uh, maybe just for europeans like that maybe not gonna be confusing for you hopefully because yeah it's weird and the fifth reason oh, fuck five fingers <laughs> i don't know how to count uh, so the fifth reason is uh, work limitations and um, you may think oh my god but in us you cannot work when you study in many countries you cannot uh, work and study and here yes you have a work permission uh, but you can work only 20 hours per week so it's basically part-time but if you want to work legally uh, and study you can only do 20 hours per week and pay the uni and it's very often uh, the uni is very expensive which is another kind of reason that you should um, you know check if it's worth for you uh, to spend so much money and for example if i would need to pay my university uh, which was really expensive because it's a master degree so it, it's uh, a lot of money and then if I would have to um, you know work 20 hours only 20 hours which is not enough I would probably never come here to study but because um, with Edgar we can pay all that but otherwise if, if you are alone and you need to pay a master degree and uh, pay for life here it would be really really tough so you can probably you know you need to you need to calculate everything really well because it might be stressful okay thank you so much that will be everything uh, for today i gave you five reasons why you shouldn't study in australia i think for me like the biggest one is um, is education and the low quality education and uh, mostly because uh, of the amount of money that you need to pay because you need to pay so much and you get really so little and and that's something that for me it's quite not fair um if you find that video useful you can probably consider you know subscribing there's gonna be more upcoming videos on studying in australia on like you know assessments how it look like how it's the structure of the university if it's difficult or not if it's better to study in a big city or the small city you know all the pros and cons um so uh yeah i think there's gonna be uh, lots of important information so yeah if you're thinking of studying probably uh, yeah uh, it might be cool to subscribe <laughs> Uh, but anyway, um, I think as well that probably I'm gonna do a video about um, the dark side of studying in Australia. In January this year, a Victorian coroner's court investigation found 27 international students had died by suicide in six years. Okay, thank you for watching and see you next time.